And to me, the temperature does plane. <laughs> plane. Where? Where? Arr! 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 Hey, welcome back to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. So today we're smoking chicken wings inside of a watermelon that we have converted to a barbecue pit. Yeah, you did hear that correctly, but we'll get to that in a minute. Today's episode is sponsored by Cheez-It Snaps. These cheesy, thin, and crispy snacks will make you wonder why you ever settled for chips in the first place. Cheez-It Snaps is a lunchtime staple and can transform a simple sandwich into an elevated meal. Now here in the Mythical Kitchen, we're always cooking up super complex dishes on camera, so lunch is when you get to kick back and just make some simple comfort food. So when Cheez-It asked to go behind the scenes to see our take on one of our lunch go-tos, a grilled cheese, Nicole and I knew adding cheese at Snaps would take our lunch break to a whole other level. You can hang behind the scenes with us and check out how we elevate our lunches on set with Cheese at Snaps right now on Cheese It's YouTube channel. Make sure to also check out all the munchable Cheese at Snap flavors. You got double cheese, cheddar sour cream and onion, jalapeno jack, and barbecue, my personal favorite, so you can pair them with your favorite part of the day too. The crispy texture and cheesy punch of flavor improves any lunch in a way potato chips simply can't. They're cheesy, they're thin, they're crispy, and they're made with 100% real cheese. Learn how to level up your lunch with Cheese at Snap by checking out our episode of What's for Lunch on the Cheese at YouTube channel. Links in the description below. Thanks again to Cheese at Snap for sponsoring that portion of today's video. All right, so I mentioned that watermelon barbecue earlier. Well, here is what we're doing. So we're smack dab in the middle of grilling season, right? I love grilling. I love donning the crop top and some Crocs and just going out there and hitting the meat. But the problem with grills is that they're expensive, they're difficult to lug around, and if you eat out their insides, you get all cut up from the metal bars. That's where the watermelon has an advantage. This tasty berry, yeah, Watermelon's a berry, deal with it. This is a super awesome invention that I am really, really proud of and the wings are truly, truly delicious. I hope you all do this at home. And if you wanna do that, we've broken the recipe down to three easy steps right there. We also got a full written recipe down in the description below. And hey, if you like podcasts or even if you don't, please check out me and Nicole's podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. The newest episode just dropped yesterday and you can find that wherever you get your podcasts. Let's get cooking. All right, so how the heck are we going to turn this here watermelon into a barbecue pit? We already kind of did that a little bit with GMM at the Willet barbecue episode. Let's remove the lid and then check the temp. I mean, it really has cooked <laughs> this pork. So what we have figured out is that if you just cut it in half, you'll see. Why talk about it when I can do it, you know? I'm gonna stab this watermelon in the heart and dead, stop breathing. And cut it down. Watermelons are not berries, I don't believe that, but they do have souls. And there we go. So we have two halves of watermelon here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hollow it out. Whoa. One of these watermelon tops is going to be our lid. One is going to be the bottom. I'm just gonna take a spoon. Nope, I'll take a knife. And I'm just gonna trace around and just try and hollow this out until we get like some sort of a kettle drum configuration. Why am I doing this? This just makes the most sense to me. We're trying to basically make this just like a big bowl. My thought here is you get like a charcoal grill, any standard charcoal grill from like a hardware store. It's just a bowl that you're filling with hot things. So you might as well use a watermelon as your bowl full of hot things and then put meat on it. Does that make sense to other people? Is that how other people's brains works? Does my brain work okay? We got a seedless watermelon here. Hey, did you know that seedless watermelons were developed at the University of Kyoto in 1951, but didn't catch popularity until America in the mid 1990s because they generally cost about nine times more to produce than seed watermelons and also have about one third of the crop yield. That's because they had to take a typical diploid watermelon that has 11 chromosomes and convert it to a tetraploid watermelon that has 22 chromosomes, then that didn't yield enough big fruit crops. Did you know that? Did you? Cause I did. Also, hey, save all these watermelon chunks cause what we're gonna do in the same way that when you smoke with like apple wood or uh, cherry barking tin some wood, you get the flavor of that wood and the flavor of whatever environment you're cooking in. So we're gonna be putting some mesquite wood right down into the bottom of this watermelon. So you should actually get a fair amount of watermelon perfume on that. And my thought with these wings here is that we're gonna make a spicy watermelon glaze that's gonna go on the wings, gonna be nice, spicy, sweet, a little bit fruity. And then the smoke off that watermelon is all gonna marry together and just be like really a uh, copacetic. I don't know what that word means. Can someone search copacetic? In excellent order. Yeah, dude, it's gonna be copacetic as heck. Ah, I'm all sticky. Oh, I hate being sticky. Oh God, it's in the elbow pits. Oh, ah, oh God. There, okay, let's go. Yeah, well, I mean, the good thing about it is it's so easy. <laughs> Wings are one of the easiest and also one of the most delicious things to smoke. They only take probably about 40, 45 minutes. And to me, the temperature does, plain. <laughs> plain, where, where, arr, 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 arr. 
All right, so the cool thing about chicken wings is that not only are they easy to smoke, they are actually like one of the most delicious things. You can like cook it anywhere between 220 degrees and like 400 degrees and they still turn out really good. So you don't need to worry too much about your heat here. What we're gonna try and do is do it over the course of about 45 minutes, get some nice char on it, still a lot of smoke flavor. So we're gonna get these marinating real quick. We got salt, we got cayenne, we got paprika, we got black pepper and we have ginger. So I want that ginger to sort of marry with the fruitiness that we're gonna do in this spicy watermelon glaze. You can toss all that in there and then like, I don't know, hit it with a little watermelon juice why not? Get them a little wet. So we're gonna take our skewers and we're gonna thread them through. I wanna do two at a time through these chickens. I've stabbed myself a whole lot doing this. So if you don't like blood. <laughs> so I'm gonna do two through each piece of chicken and try and give it like a nice solid bed here. All right, so I'm alternating here. I'm going drumette and flat. The drumettes are just to protect the flats. Uh, I'm gonna throw all the drumettes away because they are by far the inferior chicken wing. That sound fair? Yeah, no one wants the drumettes, let's be honest. So I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna go four to a skewer. I'm gonna fit three skewers on there. Again, you're not like trying to feed a family with the watermelon barbecue grill. You're taking it, you know, to the beach with that special someone, you really want to impress him. And then you're like, hey, I'm about to dig through this watermelon and, and, and bark like a dog at the plane. And then we're gonna eat a bunch of sand. Would you like that? And they go, oh my God, you're so resourceful. And that's how I imagine it. Anyways, okay, here we go. No, just clear the fingers. Oh God. All right, well, great, look at that, wow. Fill that with coals, get that on there. Bingo, bingo, barbecue chicken wings. Is this like a little bit reminiscent of that like mango habanero combination that you get from a wing restaurant? Uh, but for me, I really like the idea of watermelon. I think people, they tend to go a little too sweet, a little too spicy with that mango habanero stuff. So I'm gonna try and get some real complexity out of this with as few ingredients as possible. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna take a couple of Fresno chilies. These are really awesome. A lot of people think they're red jalapenos, but they're not. They're actually an entirely different pepper. You got thicker skins, a big fruity flavor. They're hard to find, so if you can't find that. Uh, cayenne peppers, uh, what are they called? The Long Holland peppers, red jalapenos, or uh, Thai bird's eye chilies. If you can't find any of that, just dump some cayenne pepper in there. But I wanna keep it red. You can't use green jalapenos, but then you are going to get some browning in that sauce. And we wanna keep it nice and vibrant. I'm just pouring a tiny bit of liquid in here because when I blend these Fresno chilies, like I mentioned, they do have a tough skin. So I want them to like, you know, really puree just in a little bit of liquid. How does this thing, why does this thing work? Does anyone know? Oh, there it goes. Gradually increase the speed, psych! All right, so we're gonna try and blend this up. Oh, there it goes, wah, wah. I get it, I get it. All right, so we got that, is it on still? What's happening? All right, so we got that chili and watermelon puree and I'm gonna pop that right into a hot pan. Like I said, this is a reduction. We're trying to take like the natural sugars from the watermelon and really reduce all this down with some uh, other unnatural added sugars. You know, recipes are like no added sugar. I'm like, eat a half cup of honey, idiot. So we're gonna add honey into that. That's just gonna help tighten it all up. And whenever you're making like a sweet fruit based sauce, uh, the biggest things that are gonna help you with that are salt, spice, and acid. So we're taking red wine vinegar as well and that's gonna reduce and just get nice and toit like a toiger. A little bit of black pepper to me. Anything smoked absolutely loves black pepper. <laughs> that thing almost killed me. Smoked foods love black pepper. You think about like Texas barbecue rubs, so many of them are so black pepper heavy. So I love that too. And then salt. Salt is the other thing that a lot of people don't think of. Anytime you're making like orange chicken or lemon chicken or tangerine chicken or uh, like uh, lime, 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 lime chicken, uh, satsuma chicken, pomelo chicken, ruby red grapefruit chicken, Buddha's hand chicken, oh, star fruit chicken, pineapple, we didn't say pineapple. No, not pineapple chicken. Point is, anytime you're making a fruit based sauce, you want plenty of salt salt to go in there because that's gonna give you that sort of like baseline savoriness where you're not just putting like a, it's the difference between putting like a jam on your chicken wings, which now that I'm thinking about it, probably pretty good. All right, so we're gonna crank the heat up on this and we're gonna bring it to a boil and we're just gonna let it go. We're gonna let it go for like 25, 30 minutes until this is reduced, super nice and syrupy. It's gonna be super tight, very bright red. We're gonna brush it on the wings as they're smoking. It's just gonna caramelize and get nice and juicy, crispy and lacquered. And you're gonna look at it and you see your, your reflection in the glaze and you go, wow. Life is beautiful. Or like the portrait of Dorian Gray, you're gonna die. Summer 2021, it's about grilling in parking lots and shoddily made crop tops. That's what it's about. All right, so let's do this. We got the barbecue. <laughs> we, got, well, we cut a watermelon in half is what we have. It's yet to be a barbecue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these mesquite chips that we've been soaking. Again, barbecue is a beautiful art form. Uh, so I would never do like, uh, say a brisket or ribs or anything, but chicken wings, super easy. And so you can do a kind of rudimentary method. I'm taking some soaked mesquite chips. I'm gonna pop them in the bottom of this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put coals on top of that, but leaving enough room to put the chicken wings across in the layer. So I'm gonna put on my heat glove because safety is important in the mythical kitchen. And I'm gonna grab some lump charcoal that I have heating in a chimney lighter. If you wanna learn how to use a chimney lighter properly, find like an article somewhere. I don't know. Like, we're gonna take that. Yeah, watch out everyone, shield your eyes. We're just gonna put some coals on top of there. There we go. 
All right, so you're gonna spread your coals evenly because you don't want the chicken to touch them, but the chicken really can be within like less than an inch of the coals because again, these cook super quickly and then the water from those wood chips are actually gonna sort of cool down the coals and so they're not gonna get crazy, crazy hot. We want the indirect heat to really cook this. So all you're gonna do so you're gonna space these out evenly. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna take our watermelon lid. We've crudely cut some holes out of the top. We're gonna take that and just pop it on. You might get a little bit of flare up. So check on this like every 10 minutes because you're gonna get some of the fat rendering subcutaneously from that chicken. It could hit the coals and flare, but the good news is you got all the soaked wood chips that are acting as like a sort of buffer. So it really is the perfect janky smoking machine. You're getting airflow from the slight cracks in here along with this vent hole. You see the smoke pouring up from the vent hole. It smells like chicken and watermelon and coals in summer. This is gonna be rad. Check on it every 10 minutes, give it a flip, and then after these are cooked, we're gonna glaze them with a little bit of that watermelon glaze. Woo, hot. Can I take off my shirt? All right, so the wings have been going for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna take this off. Look at that. I mean, honestly, dude, it smells really good. Like, it smells like a watermelon. You get all that chicken fat. Let's give them a flip. We're getting some lovely char on the outside. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's awesome. So if you see like, these probably need another 20 minutes to cook. You see you've gotten a little bit of char there. The heat will probably like start to mellow out as the coals go down. But what you can do, take some of that wood chip water and just splash around the coals a little bit. You can get some on the chicken. It doesn't matter. It's all going to the same place. Splash some on the coals. Then you can pop the lid back on that. And all that's gonna do, it's gonna create more smoke. You're gonna get more flavor. It's gonna cool down the temp, but they can go longer. Probably got another about 20 minutes on these bad boys. I think it's been going for about half an hour. Let's check it. We flipped it a couple of times, and I mean, these look so stupid good. You get an absolutely great caramelization, great browning on both sides. They're probably about five minutes away from being perfectly done. The good news again about wings is like, you can undercook them, don't eat the raw chicken, but you almost can't overcook them in a way. And so I'm gonna take that watermelon glaze. I'm gonna brush it all over the top. There's so much sugar in this that it's gonna caramelize really quickly. So you only want them to be glazed for about five minutes on there. God dang, I mean, you're getting like great, like Chinese takeout vibes from all the sugar in there. And the heat from the coals, just gonna caramelize that glaze really nicely. Get it like three or four minutes on one side, flip it over a couple minutes on the other side. Absolutely perfect. This is, uh, this shouldn't have worked. Like, can we all, can we all just agree on that? That this is a dumb idea that shouldn't have worked and it did and we're all very happy about it? Which I feel like is kind of mythical kitchen in a nutshell. And then just gonna close it up, lid back on, couple minutes, we'll flip and these are ready to plate. These are the watermelon smoked wings. I can't wait to dig in. Oh, that's hot. Don't put your hands casually over the smoke hole. We got these wings, they're fresh off this watermelon smoker. We got them glazed in that spicy watermelon. It's absolutely fantastic. But summer grilling season, it's about friends. Friends, come join me and eat friends. 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 Church, church hug. Church hug. Oh, that oh, wasn't sorry. even a church. No, I do a half church egg. You guys ready to eat some wings? Yeah. Oh, no. oh. Are they hot? Okay. No, no, no. They're a little hot. They're a little hot. I'm a, I know I dogged oh, on drumettes yeah. earlier, but this looks oh, really good. I want this little guy here. Hey, cheers, cheers to the summer. best summer of our lives. Oh my God. Holy crap. That's a good wing. It's actually crazy how much smoky flavor you've got mm -hmm. from just being in a watermelon. Right. <laughs> you know? First flavor I get is smoked. Second flavor I'm actually getting is all that black pepper in the rub. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then you get the sweetness in the watermelon. It's like ridiculous how balanced these wings are. Yeah. Right? It's, like a, it's like a nice smoky Thai chili mm -hmm. wing. Thank you guys for all the hard work. This is a heck of a project to put together. Can I eat the, the watermelon? Water. Eat the watermelon, yeah. That's the dessert. We, we didn't save money for ice cream after. We don't what? get ice cream after? No ice cream. It's summer. What kind of summer, summer is yeah, this? Yeah, what? I, I give them everything they, they <laughs> take from me, everything. What, 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 what can I do? What can I do? Thank you all so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes out every week. We got new episodes of our podcast every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, under hashtag dreams become food with pictures of your mythical dishes, just like Magda did. She said she was working at a restaurant down in Texas when the pandemic hit. She said she wasn't a really brave or adventurous cook. But when she saw that we did the hashtag leftovers challenge, she got really inspired and she made these really awesome biscuit and gravy croquettes. Thank you so much, Magda. I mean, honestly, it means a lot to us that that meant a lot to you, and I hope that we can continue meaning a lot to you, and you continue to mean a lot yeah. to us. Mm -hmm. See y'all next time. Get as messy as you want in your own kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Towel, available now at mythical.com.